So, if you, like me, have been looking at this video online and you're not finding anything about the number two, then I've made a small little video that will hopefully give you just a really quick rundown if this is a product for you. The reason why I chose to pick this product up is, again, it's the cheapest OLED on the market in Europe. There probably are other variants in different countries that you could consider. Uh, the second reason is it's a QD OLED. I find that a glossy finish is very uh, appealing, which uh, this specific brand has. The other models that I had um, available to me, even though they featured higher refresh rate, uh, they were matte finishes and I just felt like that was not for me. I'm coming off using the LDC one as a monitor previously. Currently I'm using the Tempest 1440p uh, monitor. And I also have a C3 at home that I use for movies and 4K gaming. So the main reason why I want this is for 1440p, primarily the game that I play, um, not competitively, it's more with friends and just having fun, it's COD. But I feel like that 240Hz would really help me. I feel like 360Hz is not really what I need at this uh, point in time and I'd rather save the money and buy an upgrade in the future and with burn-in being what it is with OLED it seems kind of risky. Um, again I've not seen any dramatic burn-in on the panels that I've the, mono, uh, the TVs I've owned previously I should say this is the first OLED panel that I've purchased and I'm quite excited like I I looked at the previous uh, generation of this panel it did not look as impressive as this this looks like a step in the right direction uh, feels like it's ticking a lot of boxes, especially in terms of price and what you get out of the box. I, I will say though, I've only had this for a couple of hours uh, and I just want to get this video out there to help people. The input delay is amazing, super fluid, great experience, great experience really. But uh, the colors, I'm not really sure if they're accurate. There is a slip in this box. Let me see if I can get this open one-handed. It's the other way, isn't it? Yes. So, there is this slip here. And what do we have here? So, sRGB 100%, DZI-P3 99.4%, Adobe RGB 98.1%. I don't know. Um, I don't know how accurate this monitor is. I feel like if I compare it to others, I haven't put it one to one, but just going off what I know other monitors look like and what my TVs look like, I feel like the, uh, when I'm playing with HDR on this monitor that the colors are a bit oversaturated. But again, I haven't had time to tweak it enough. Um, might just come down to that. So let me just recap quickly here. Number one price, number two, I don't even know what I said in the video anymore. Uh, anyways, I'll just edit this <laughs> together really. So with the current market, this is absolutely the cheapest OLED on the market. In Sweden, which uh, I'm based in, it retails for 6,000 kroner, which is like 600 euros. Every other panel, um, the closest one would be this one. Obviously, it's uh, another another additional 120 hertz, which makes uh, which makes it very appealing. But I believe this one is a matte finish and Q QD OLED matte. But I've read mixed reviews on that one. Some people really like the um, panel that they're using and the finish uh, but some people didn't seem to this one was not on sale when I looked the other day but it's on sale now interesting option but still when you look at it on paper it's 240 Hertz this is also a OLED uh, it doesn't say if it's uh, QD OLED or just as OLED so I'm not quite sure if these are older generations or if this is something that's come in recently Ah, I can't see when it was uh, uploaded, but it's it's besides the point. Literally, this is the cheapest one. From what I can tell, in most countries, this is around like 600 uh, euros or 600 USD, which seems like a fair price. It's probably cheaper in the US. You have to consider in Europe as well, we pay a lot more tax for our products. This is the original model. 
uh, which is the original retail price. So obviously this is a very attractive price. Um, looking at what people are saying on Reddit, um, this guy, Stefo Sterofuse, has posted uh, a comment saying he thinks this panel is a 2.5 gen, so it's probably in between here since it features the 240 hertz. So all of the stuff here should be relevant to this panel. We don't think this is a Gen 1 or Gen 2 panel. This is likely Gen 2.5. I don't think it's Gen 3 since it's not featuring 240 hertz. Um, really, it's hard to say, uh, but I've read it somewhere. I, I'm not sure if I've, I have it here, but people mentioned that it was a Samsung panel. So seems reasonable. So here I've prepared a little sample of some SDR and HDR. Again, this is recorded with my phone, so it won't be the best quality. And it's, there's really no way to perceive this unless you're seeing it in reality. But considering what material is out there, uh, it's not really much you can go on. But at least it's something uh, just to give you an idea of, uh, of what HDR might look like. But again, this is my camera picking this up and then you're watching it back on either your phone or your um, monitor. So you will have a different color in the end of the day. Um, but what I can say is with the current settings uh, that I have for HDR, I feel like they're very vibrant and very punchy. I don't know if these are real colors because um, I'm comparing to my IPS, which I previously had hooked up and I was using as a monitor. Um, I feel like, yeah, even there, that it will be a, a, a massive difference. And again, it could be the IPS that had the wrong colors. Run the gameplay so you can sort of look at the smoothness. Obviously, it's an, it's an at an angle, so that's not ideal, but what can you do? Happen that smoke. But yeah, like, I came from the Tempest uh, 27 QLED. QLED, uh, is it QLED? I think, no, it's a mini LED. And maybe it's the same thing. So basically, I came from the 27 inch 1440p. It's an IPS monitor at the end of the day, and I could definitely see stuttering at this frame rate. Like, with variable sync, running this game at 120 FPS, hovering around that area, sometimes 100. It's working out really, really well with the OLED, because of the OLED's in low input delay. It's a super smooth experience. And currently I'm using a 3080 and a i9 12th uh, gen in this PC. I also have a, a 7800X3D and a 4090, uh, but that's currently hooked up to another uh, TV. Uh, I'm using it on the C3 78 7 inch OLED, doing some 4K gaming on that. So I'm probably going to hook that up and see what the experience is like uh, playing on this TV. But so far, I think it's really good. And like if you're looking at a budget option for an OLED, I would probably recommend this. Unfortunately, I can't really compare against other OLED panels. I don't know what type of quality we're looking at there. But coming off a OLED C1, I've owned two. Uh, used to have one as my main gaming monitor and the other one as a TV. And then also I now have the C377 inch. I feel like this is a, as a step in the right direction. Like this is my first uh, OLED uh, monitor. But yeah, I have owned TVs and I have used them as panels in the... I've used them as panels in the past. Sorry about that, I had to focus for a second. Let's go have a look over here, see someone on the minimap. Actually might be on top. Uh. 
Sorry about that. <laughs> oh shit, someone's coming from above. But yeah, in terms of uh, input delay, like it's fantastic. Uh, I don't know what the exact specifics are because I looked at a previous uh, generation video, like the panel before this, and for same guy. Basically, let me bring up that video. And here, if we freeze frame. So basically, for whatever reason. The processing lag and the refresh lag and the processing lag plus response time milliseconds are quite a bit higher than other OLEDs. And it's surprising to see that this panel has higher latency or higher lag than the C2. I would expect it to be different. But again, this is the version 1 and that's the W OLED. Maybe this being a QD OLED it's going to be a lot lower. I would actually presume it is because I'm not perceiving any lag. Like I feel like it's second to none. And like I mentioned, I came from this monitor. And I'm noticing like a massive difference, but that's just coming from IPS to, to OLED. Like I just feel like that's making that difference, even though this is also quite low in terms of response time. Um, so yeah, that's an interesting one to consider. But again, different panel, different generation, completely different tech. So I feel like it shouldn't be as low or actually as high as it is here. It must be lower. I, I would assume it's somewhere around like this level here on top. Just as uh, I was editing this video together, I had a message pop up on screen warning me about having used the monitor uh, more than four hours and that it was recommending a clean. Uh, I've read about this online as well somewhere. Let's see in the, in the OLED extra care. I think it's the auto warning that just popped up. Um, I need to do some checks if pixel refresh should be on or off or if it automatically refreshes pixels pixels while it's off okay oh actually you can see here time after pixel refresh 7.0 pixel refresh counts zero so that's good this is obviously a new monitor and it's never been used before but yeah it's probably worth uh, keeping a look at that and seeing what the value says in the future